Good evening, everyone. My name is Ellie Weisenberg Kelly, and I am the manager of public programs at the Pacantico Center of the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. On behalf of everyone at the RBF, it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's work in process performance of the painting by Machine Dazzle with his collaborators, Viva DiConcini and Gerard Cowenhoven. Once home to the Rockefeller family, the Pacanico Center's verdant campus in the scenic hills of the Hudson Valley has been host to some of the most influential leaders, thinkers, and creative minds of the last century. Today, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund continues to bring people together at Pacantico through a robust slate of conferences, artist residencies, tours, performances, and educational programs. While Pacantico is currently closed due to the pandemic, we're so happy to be able to connect with audiences from all over the world through our virtual platforms. Please feel free to pop into the chat and let us know where you're joining us from. Before we, we begin tonight's program, we'd like to honor the legacy of the indigenous people of Pacanico, the unceded ancestral territory of the Lenape, past, present, and future, in gratitude and appreciation and in recognition of their displacement and dispossession. Tonight, we're thrilled to present the painting by Machine Dazzle, a series of stories and songs exploring Machine's complicated relationship with his father. Machine began developing this project during his residency at the Pacanico Center in January 2020. The RBF's Culpeper Arts and Culture Program provides time, space, and support for artists in the creative process, and it was through our partnership with Works in Process at the Guggenheim that we had the pleasure of hosting Machine. We're so excited to hear the evolution of the painting tonight as it and, as it, and as it continues to develop. And now a little about Machine. Machine Dazzle has been dazzling stages via costumes, sets, and performances since his arrival in New York in 1994. Machine has collaborated with, art, with artists Julie Atlas Muse, Big Art, Justin Vivian Bond, Taylor Mack, Chris Tanner, Sumi Kim, Pig Iron Theater, Bombay Ricky, and has designed projects for Opera Philadelphia and Spiegel World. In September 2019, Dazzle premiered his new original show, Treasure, at the Guggenheim Museum as a commission by Works in Process. In addition, he has recently held residencies at Tyler School of Art at Temple University, Moody Center of the Arts at the University of Houston, and Harvard University's Department of Theater, Dance, and Media. Machine Dazzle's work has been exhibited at Parsons School of Design in New York City, and his Instagram account, at Machine Dazzle, was highlighted in the New York Times as Best of Theater in 2020. Machine Dazzle is an artist in residence at Mana Contemporary in Jersey City, New Jersey. I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues at the RBF for helping to make tonight's event possible. Judy Clark, Executive Director of the Pianico Center, Regina Cregan, Director of Conferences and Administration, Ari Klickstein, Communications Associate and Digital Specialist, and Ben Rodriguez Cubenas, Program Director of the Culpeper Arts and Culture Program. We'd also like to thank Jess Ronestage at Venture.com for her technical assistance and the teams at Pomegranate Arts and Guggenheim Works in Process for their partnership. We'll try to make time for a Q&A after the performance tonight, so please feel free to post your questions um, for Machine, Viva, and Gerard into the Q&A box, and you can use the upvote or the like thumbs up function if you see a question that you'd like answered. And we'll do our best to get to as many questions as we can in the time we have tonight. If you have a question that you're not, we're not able to get to today, you can email us at mechanicalprograms at rbf.org and we'll do our best to get back to you. And just a final note, we're recording today's Q&A and we'll be posting it online soon. And with that, I am thrilled to turn things over to Machine Dazzle, Viva and Gerard. Thank you. Machine will need to unmute, please. Good evening. Thank you. 
show um first of all my thank yous <gasps> thank you rockefeller brothers fund thank you thank you pomegranate arts thank you monera foundation at mana contemporary huge amazing big juicy thank you to viva on guitar and vocals and gerard on just about everything else <laughs> everything Thank you. Um, we are at the ministry here in Brooklyn. Patrick, why don't you come and say hi? <gasps> this is where Patrick lives. Hello, everybody. And Patrick and Gerard are boyfriends. So nasty. Oh my God, and Viva's girlfriend is right over here, Erica. I mean, well, she's, she's seated on a sofa. So, you know, it's a little difficult for her to get up, but she's gonna be there. But I have a feeling she might make an appearance later. Who knows? And, um, my last thank you might be um, to my neighbors who finally took all of their shit off of their balcony. I've been staring at it all goddamn winter and I have a feeling it was blocking my energies. See, I would, you know, I sit in my living room and there on this beautiful pink chair and there are these, you know, those trashy neighbors who keep things out on their terrace and they kind of, you know, they cover it up with a tarp and it just looks hideous as hell. And it's like, and for like, what was it exactly? I don't know, but all I know now is gone, which leads me to think that maybe they didn't really need that shit anyway. I don't know. But anyway, thank you for unblocking the energies, neighbors. All right. So um, this show is called The Painting and uh, we are workshopping it. Um, um, 
you know, ultimately, there's probably going to be twice as many songs, I imagine. And, um, uh, you know, and I might even do a visual with it, maybe have a fashion show in between, uh, like I did Treasure, the Guggenheim, if you happen to see that show. Um, so, yes, the painting. And this show, um, this show is a little bit about my father and about the, the workings of the, the patriarchy and how those two relationships, uh, uh, you know, are intertwined. And then, of course, the relationship between me and my father, which is another intertwining. And uh, so that's what we're doing. And uh, my, my father is actually loving men. I doubt very much he's watching. Um, We'll learn more about him, you know, throughout the show. I don't want to babble too much because I want there to be questions. You have time for questions at the end. So, you know, I mean, bear with me. Okay, um, what else? Okay, so that first song, yes. Um, maybe you noticed an ocean theme. Um, there was an ocean theme in Treasure, too. Treasure was the show about my mother. This is the painting. It's about my father. Um, they grew up next to the ocean. My father ended up spending a lot of time on the ocean. He uh, worked on oil tankers, and he would spend, oh God, who knows how much time over all of those years he spent on the ocean. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that. Um, and... Uh, I'm, I'm interested in water, you know, it's all healing and it, we need it. And there's something about the ocean that's just, I don't know, it represents everything, you know, eternity, time, abundance, um, you know, that kind of stuff. <sighs> anyway, um, how about I kind of introduce the next song, but don't start yet, don't start yet. So, um, of course, um, and this doesn't happen to everybody, but I, uh, uh, I um oh I forgot to talk about my look. You may have noticed that I'm a little plain tonight. You might have noticed, and that's because I wanted to be a blank canvas for you this evening. You're going to do the painting tonight, not me. So I'm giving you this blank canvas to paint on. Yes. And as if it didn't, as if it didn't, it doesn't really need to be said, but of course, you know, if my sexuality, you know, and my parents, you know, it wasn't obviously, uh, you know, the ideal situation. I mean, some people are friends with, you know, their parents, you know, some people, they have great relationships. Some people call their mother or father both like every day or all the time, once a week, you know, I might talk to my father a couple times a year, you know, um, but that's normal for us. And, um, Anyway, a particular uh, story that I, um, that I am going to tell <laughs> is uh, one of the last times that I went to visit him. Uh, we went to IHOP, International House of Pancakes, and uh, uh, we uh, met up with some of his friends. Um, and uh, so, you know, there we were, we had coffee and some pancakes and whatever. And, uh, you know, his friends are all friends from church and they're all rather conservative. And um, so they started, you know, questioning me and kind of, um, you know, emotionally poking me and kind of prodding me. And uh, I sat there just not really knowing what to say because it was like all of them and my father just kind of watched. Um, while his best friend kind of just kept challenging me on my religious beliefs and my sexuality. And um, I, uh, I didn't really appreciate it. Um, I'm not entirely sure that my father knows just how difficult that was for me. Anyway, I'm still here and I survived. And we are going to go into the next song finally. Thank you, Viva and Gerard, for waiting and let's hit it. Traffic and gasoline, share with me. Nervous as we find a seat, understand. Shiny shoes on my feet, and a mind. 
distracted by the light outside Saying to me, reluctant to obey the ride Look across you where that new verse you see Sunlight through the colored glass Bring to me Trudging through the guilt on mass Gratitude Two hands on the clock suspend Go the way Will this torture ever end? Feel the light Dance rehearse I still forget Feel the joy Wanting out I don't regret Give the love Doors will open at the end Live in peace we will rise and say amen when the cross you wear and the first view of If you weren't caught up in so much hate Your way or the highway isn't my way through this life I'll stab my way to salvation using a different knife Your hand in the quicksand isn't my idea of faith I'll see you on the other side of those pearly gates oh. Across you where And the verse you see is the cross you bear and the fire that you breathe the finger pointing from above is telling us we should be making love there's time to renegotiate your fate if you weren't caught up in so much hate the cross you bear and give back to those in need. And if you need me, you won't find me caught in your sacred trap. I'll be drinking blood and eating porn star salad on the devil's lap. Oh, the crowd goes wild. Wild, I say wild. What's yeah. up, Rockefeller brother? Oh, no, yay. Oh, oh, yay. Um, I hope you can all hear me and understand me. Oh, here's my notes. Okay, wait, after the second song, what is it? <laughs> Oh God, church, right. So that was church. <laughs> Although I have to say, thanks to Viva and Gerard, that's, that's what I wanted to hear when I went to church, right? I mean, I mean, uh, you know, I grew up, oh, yeah. oh my God, you guys, like, that was amazing. <laughs> and this is an open, open borders in this studio, honey. If you have something to say, you better say it. And that means in the chats too. And of course I'm not looking at the chats and maybe I'll see them later. I don't know. Anyway, so you know, I grew up Catholic, um, you know, I was even an altar boy and all of that stuff. And you know, my experience was just, it was just so depressing. It was so depressing. I is like in the suburbs of Houston, you know, I mean, we eventually kind of lost faith as a family um, after we moved from Texas to Idaho where there's like a whole Mormon experience. It was just, you know, we were going, we were having a hard time as a family and just everything, you know, financially and oh, emotionally and everything. So anyway, um, yeah, 
you know, as faith. I was always jealous of like the Baptists. You know, I'd see it on TV and they were up and they were dancing and they were like really getting into it. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, I wish that my experience had been that, but you know, now that I am older, I have a choice and I can do that. In fact, I'm doing it right now. Okay, I will say the one saving grace about those years going to church is, and this particularly is, you know, pertains to my father is, first of all, okay, I hated going. I absolutely hated it. I didn't want to get out, like, they come in, turn on the light. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're going to church. It's like, no. But when we got home from church, my father would take orders and he would make these big juicy omelets and there would be like pancakes and the omelets were like, you know, cooked in bacon grease. And it's like, what do you want in yours? And it's like, I want everything, dad. I want it all. Mm, mm, mm. And so that was like, you know, I think I went to church. I forced myself to think that way. I went to church for the omelets, which <laughs> happened after church. But hey, you know, we do what we have to, to, you know, get through life. And, and I do, I miss those omelets. I go, might even consider going all the way back home for one of those omelets right now. Um, okay, so, oh, another great memory from church. Look, I'm just reading my notes and I know this isn't very elegant, you know, but you know, who says that, you know, life isn't elegant, you know, every now and then you, you step in it. At Christmas time, we would go to like a Christmas mass. And then at the end, we were invited to take all the poinsettias. We're invited to like run. You had, and you had to run. So my mother had us like, okay, me and my two brothers, there we were, we put our running shoes on and then we were like, go. And we would each grab two. So we'd go and my mom would grab one. And if my dad would happen to be around, um, then he would grab one too. But the thing is he wasn't really around that much. He was out sailing on the ocean on an oil tanker. Um, when I do the show for real, I'll go more into it. We're just workshopping right now, but just know that my father spent a lot of time at sea and uh, my mother kind of like raised me and my two brothers and that wasn't easy, but my father was very hardworking and we'll say that. So before I sing this next song and this, uh, this what I'm about to say is not introducing the next song necessarily, but uh, you know, we have, um, sorry, my head, you know, go. Um, there are many levels of belief and disbelief, things that, um, like other things in life that, you know, we peel away, peel away like onion skin, you know, like, okay, well, okay, Santa is one of them, you know, at some point you figure out that Santa isn't real. And then at another point, you might figure out that re unicorns are not real. And then something else that, you know, you don't really want to know about, but you're forced to consider is your parents' sexuality. And uh, ooh, and um, I know, and um, uh, and the fact that there's sexual. Oh my God! Ah! And um, you know, it's just it's just kind of a weird thing. You don't really like to think about it, but you know, uh, you know, when my father would go away for long periods of time, and <laughs> I hope this doesn't come back to me. Like, but you know, I'm just like, you know, me and my brothers would like sneak into my dad's dresser, and he had some adult films. Oh my God, that's where I really learned how to do it. VHS, honey, get into it. Hard plastic. And that's true. I could go more into that, but I'm not going to. But just so you know, um, I, first of all, I had no idea, like, like, not only that, but it's like, you can actually buy it. You can actually see other people like having sex and you can see, it's like, it's a, and it's a thing. I, you know, when I realized that, let me tell you something. I was like looking at those things every time he left the house. Um, still have to look out for mom though. All right, so this next song, um, am I organized here? Um, yes, here's the deal. This is all so new. Um, well, it is, it's new and it's not. Okay, here's the deal. In, God, was it just last year? January of 2020, it's been over a year ago. Ah. Beef and I went up to the Botanico uh, Center mm -hmm. on the Rockefeller Estate there and we spent a week and I started writing these songs. And then just, you know, of course, a few months later we were all in quarantine and I hadn't like revisited it, even though I knew I still wanted to do the show. And so a lot of these lyrics have happened but it's only recently that I started like really finishing the songs and really practicing them. And another big round of applause to Viva and Gerard for really bringing these songs, you know, to life. And it's just, it's magic. And it's, um, it's my version of, you know, making love. Uh, God, 
Was that, I think, I think that was a complete thought. <laughs> if it wasn't a complete thought, ask me later in the comments. I think we should do the next song. Let's do it. too long again. Um, let's see. Okay, the, that last song, which is the title. Track. The title. Thank you. The it is the title. The titular it's track. The titular track. That is the title track of the show. I've been working on that show. Uh, for that show. I've been working on that show. I've been working on that song since 9/11 happened. And ultimately, what that song is about is finding spirituality through extreme trauma. Uh, and um, 
I just love that song and I'm so happy we got it right. I was very, very happy. Um, what else? Um, we can go into, we can totally go into the, uh, you know, spirituality through trauma thing a lot more. But like I said, we could talk about that for a very long time. <laughs> um, I will talk about it later when I have more of the show sussed out because I think that that's a large part of where I come from as an artist. And just as a thinker and a being in the world, uh, I think you learn a lot from traumatic experiences. Um, anyway, maybe you agree, maybe you don't agree. Anyway, back to my father. Um, let's talk about, <laughs> um, did everyone hear that? What did you say? I said, uh, well, you said if you learn a lot from traumatic experiences, then we must be geniuses. <laughs> Girl, I right am now. From, from those gorgeous lips to the goddess's ears. And ain't that the gospel truth? Wouldn't you say, Gerard? You're sure looking special, but wait, Gerard, you were in the light and now you're in the dark. Uh -oh. It's okay. Well, maybe you're equal with me, but now, look, whatever. It's okay. Look, this is a workshop. Um, back to my father, like I said. So I wanted to mention a few good points about my father. I mean, as if the omelets weren't good enough. I mean, you're sold. You're sold. I'm, I, look, like I said, I'd go back right now if I could have one of those juicy fucking omelets. He's a Virgo. Oh my God, oh my God, a virgin, oh my God. You, well, we all know, you probably know Virgos. I'm actually Virgo rising, oh my God. Um, you know, organized, you know, have a meth methodic. Um, you know, I, I know a few Virgos are a little like, maybe a little out, I mean, they can be outspoken or it's just like they think that they're, I don't know, there's a thing. Look, uh, why is he a top? No, let's not go into that, let's not go into that. Um, He's a Virgo, um, so we, you know, the garage was always immaculate. It was very well organized and it was always very clean. On Christmas, Christmas keeps coming up. I grew up with Christmas. Maybe you grew up with something else. Good. When my father did the lights on the house, we grew up in suburban homes and we always had like the best house on the block when it came to decorating for an occasion, which I'm very grateful for. And we, we always had really perfectly manicured lawns and shrubbery, darling, shrubbery. And you know, it's a lovely shrubbery. And uh, my father would meticulously for hours go up on a ladder and make sure every light was pointing in the same direction. Everything was perfectly placed. It was art. That's very Virgo. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, um, I grew up when he was home on those rarish occasions. Um, uh, he played the organ. I grew up with an electric organ in our in our house. It was always there, and we'd come, and he could really, really play. And it was just music. I was like, it, yes, it was music. It was magic when he just like sat down and he was using the pedal and he's using both hands and he was reading the music. And although he kind of had it, you know, uh, memorized really, um, but he used to play these things, and I'm like, and. Uh, my father was a real self-starter. Uh, you know, he came from a very small town. And this is something that I mention often. Um, it's like, like he, his graduating class was three people in this small town in Maine, like small town. Um, school was too small for football. He was the, he was the captain of the basketball team. Um, so, you know, he knows how to handle those balls and that's really, really great. Um, what else? Um, he also had a guitar. I don't recall him ever playing it, but he had a guitar. Um, it was either in his, um, you know, closet or it was like in the attic, but he had one, which I know, I know he knew how to play it. Um, what else? Something that um, he never had though, was a gun. My father never had a gun. I personally don't like guns. I think that they're kind of bad energy. <laughs> and uh, my father currently lives in Colorado. I woke up yesterday hearing about what happened in Boulder. Um, these you know, things keep happening because people have access to guns. And um, I don't know when we'll ever, you know, I don't know when we'll ever get that one right, but I'm happy my father never owned a gun, thank God. Uh, and uh, I, he was a disciplinarian though. He was the disciplinarian. Um, and I like, God, what else do I really need to tell you? Um, I don't even know where we are in time, but I do know that we have two songs left. Let me get ready. Okay. So this next, um, if you are having a drink this evening, 
um, or if you need another one, this would be a great time to do it. Uh, because we're going to have a little toast after this song, before the final song. And um, this is a, uh, a prayer. Um, it's, a, it's a spell. It's, uh, it's a wish, maybe. It says, uh, I'm working towards getting rid of these people. I want, uh, we need to get rid of white supremacy. We need to get rid of people who kill people with guns. We need to get rid of all of and everything that's related to it. That's another, we could go off on a tangent and you all know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is a song to celebrate the death of all of those things that are not serving us. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, Patrick, for popping that bottle. 
I've been waiting for a drink all night long. Oh, oh as the spell does, oh, as the spell does, okay, there they go, up to the floor. Oh, what I meant that the show is new is that I've been reading the lyrics this whole time. You've been able to see that, and I'm, I apologize for not mentioning it er earlier, but you know, I mean, I look, I have a lot going on, you know, I mean, I can't have time to memorize lyrics, but you know. Um, someday I will. Ooh. <laughs> One for Viva. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you, darling. Thank you, Holly Jacobson, for this. Um, my friend Holly Jacobson in Seattle uh, with Path of Arts and Destiny. Thank you, darling. Oh, my goodness. Um, yes. Ooh. Thank you. Um, so, we're going to do a toast. We are. We are. Let's just, let's just do this. Okay. Um. When, so this is, okay, there we go. All right, a toast to the skyline of their graves. Chilled. Mm. I don't think champagne has ever tasted better, do you? It's delicious. Oh, <laughs> it makes me want to sing a final song. But wait, I have more. Mm. Um, I'll put this out of here, I'll be there. Cheers, everybody. Um, I think, oh, uh, this is, it is come, <laughs> time to talk about what happened. So, you know, we are gonna finish. And, you know, I really do love a good rock and roll song. <gasps> I forgot, I forgot to change my clothes. Oh, you could do Jesus it Jesus Christ, that's because, great. I have a costume It's not change. too late, there's still work So here's stuff. what happened. So there I was yesterday and I was trying to figure out what the hell I was gonna wear. And then I, I called up my friends at Wing and Weft Gloves. And I'm like, do you have this? And they're like, no, do you have this? No. So I decided to go in. Um, and this is before. Um, oh, thank you. Yes, these are definitely more rock and roll. Thank you. Oh my God. And so I ended up buying three pairs of gloves and I didn't want to bore you. I, I'd rather bore you with words than with another glove change. So you only get to see one glove change this time. But here's what happened. I went specifically for these gloves. Thank you. I called them up and I'm like, do you have a solid white, you know, blank canvas? And they were like, no. And I'm like, oh, uh, well, what do you have? That's like, like kind of like, you know, extra long, queen size. And they're like, the girl on the phone, she was like, we have a pink vinyl, bubblegum pink, um, you know, stretch. And I was like, ew. But then I was like, ew. <laughs> so that's why I went and I got this and I'm just, you know, and I, oh, these are my rock and roll gloves for the last song. And um, so for the last like over a year, year and a half, I was growing out my hair. Because um, the only reason to have long hair really is for rock and roll. I really do believe that. Unless you happen to have a convertible, but most people don't. Uh, and so, but last night I was having a cleansing ritual and I cut off all of my hair. Oh, yeah. There's no hair under here. I buzzed it all. Well, I left a little fluff on top because I like something to play with. Um, my hair is available for spells if you need any. <laughs> right now it's in a paper bag in my freezer. So, you know, let me know if you need any hair. I do actually have like, I have some pretty great hair. Yeah. But Viva, wait, Viva has the best quote about. Oh yeah, I paraphrase Yogi Berra and I say, uh, 70% of rock and roll is 90% hair. Right. <laughs> and so anyway, I guess I, I got rid of my 70% no, and 90%. That's a lot of percent shit. <laughs> you'll see how still rock and roll he is. Um, you know, I think, oh God, what else did I want to say here? I'm just having such a great time. I hope you've had Me a great too. time. We have one final song, but hold on. Back to I'm that. I'm having fun too. Thanks Are you having fun? Thanks for including me. I think, thank you for, I, I can't have Hi. a better, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> oh, another cheers, thank another you. cheers, everyone. Here, let's do that. Oh, look at another that. Cheers. Another cheers. cheers. Oh, let's cheers. 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 To okay. the skyline graves. To the skyline of their graves. And to you All at of home. those people who you. are destroying society. They're not building, they're destroying it. Smell you later, Patreon. How do they think they are? Mm. So, you know, how can I, um, something that, uh, I, you know, I go back and forth with, you know, my father worked, uh, you know, for an oil company. So I think of oil. I think of oil spills, you know, the animals. Uh, um, then my father worked for a nuclear power plant. 
two of them, and I think of nuclear power, and I think of the destruction there, and all of those possibilities, and I'm conflicted. Um, but the truth is, at the end of the day, my father, you know, he had a, you know, a wife, my mother, and he had three kids to support, and he was doing what he knew how to do um, to keep us alive, and uh, and um, I love my father, and. Uh, Anyway, I don't know. I haven't seen him for a couple of years. Uh, last year didn't help at all. Um, he's definitely, he's not like one of those, he's not on a, you know, he has the oxygen, the tubes, he goes all around the house and the tubes have to follow him so he can like breathe. But you know, they're in Colorado, it's like there's less air. Um, I could go into the complications of, you know, a lot of things. Um, one thing that my father does every year and this is one of my favorite things. And this is something that actually for my birthday show, Viva and Erica and Gerard and Patrick experienced because we were all here on my birthday, December 30th, my father um, makes fudge every year. Um, and I get this little box and it usually arrives right around my birthday. And so I was able to share it. Um, so, you know, daddy's fudge. I keep not trying to think of like a porn that I would find in someone's dresser drawer. <laughs> We're not gonna go there. Wait, machine, you did not. I did. <gasps> daddy's fudge. Okay, I'll shut up. Okay, I think it's about time. Where the hell, let me look at, <laughs> I'm out of, uh, where is, um, I feel like I'm missing a page. Tension inside. In the... Hold on, everyone. Oh, no, I know I have the pages here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Next time will be better. I don't even know where we are in time. I'm afraid to look. I probably blabbed too much. Let's not- We're, we're good. You just do your thing. It's great. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right. Computer has spoken. <laughs> that was kind of like the, uh, you know, on the peanuts while well, the adults were like, wah, 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 wah. Oh, you didn't really sound like that. Don't take that the wrong way. I was just, you know, finding you. But the next time you do that, could you do that? That way, <laughs> you know, we get the joke in there. All right. Mm. I think it's about fucking time we did a rock and roll song, don't you? Let's do it. Call 
blood pooling, hate pooling, but by the tide, meet me at the place where we can confide. Bombs, triggers, grave diggers, and genocide. Meet you at the place where nations collide. There's nowhere to run from this. The truth lives. There's nowhere to run from this. The truth lives. Well, wasn't that a fabulous rubber? I mean, I don't know about you. The hair that is no longer on my head had an amazing time during <laughs> that last number. And uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I got, I think I got lost, but I sure do feel special. All right. Um, well, that was amazing. For you <laughs> I'm choosing you from here. <laughs> That was incredible. Thank you guys so much. I mean, so much, so much to unpack, but in you made us laugh our asses off while talking about trauma. And, you know, I think we all, we all could use that these days. So yeah, it's be okay. beautiful, beautifully, beautiful performance. So congratulations to all of you. It's really- Thank you everyone for watching. I don't even know how many people <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, what are, so do we have questions? And remember, these questions can be for, you know, Viva and Trevard and not just me. In fact, I might let them answer the questions. I'm going to go get more champagne. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll give people a moment if they want to post some questions in the Q&A. Um, so I can kick it off. And I want to know what the next evolution of the painting is. Um, and where do you envision the project going? And what's your, what's your plan for it? The next evolution of the painting would be about twice as many songs, um, stories that are maybe, you know, much more in place perhaps, you know. I was throwing out a lot of information and I would like to sculpt it a little bit more. I'm a visualist, so I would like, you know, the sets and any props, um, you know, that help tell, help tell the story. And plus, I would love to have a whole fashion show during, the sh you know, the show, I say fashion show, fashion show is a medium. Um, that means uh, models come out wearing this and that, it, that further helps tell the story. And the looks will be inspired by this story. Um, you know, walking around in broad daylight, you know, you never know when inspiration is gonna hit. Um, in this case, I am actually using my own narrative, my own songs and everything to inspire me. Um, I'm fond of saying that uh, music inspires me more than anything else. Um, like when I hear a song that I love, I start to see shapes. I start to design things. What do I want to wear in this moment? What is that, you know, what is that sound shaped like and how can I fit it on the body? Uh, stuff like that. So I want, and if there isn't an actual show, maybe these people are just like all around the room already. Uh, you know, I mean, dancers, they could come out and do a little dance. People are just sitting, I mean, troublemakers, random acts of fabulousness all around the place. Um, and uh, I would like to just, uh, the truth is, I've been working on this show for a while. There are probably 20 more songs that I could put in this show, but you know, you have to, that's, you know, that's like, don't worry, don't, don't worry. Enough. We're not gonna do, oh my God, look at you, oh. Thanks, honey. I'm not sure if you noticed the lilies over there, but there's lilies. Um, thank you, Patrick. Oh, that's much better. Um, yeah, you probably thought it was blood coming out of my mouth this whole time, but actually it's neon paint coming out. So surprise. Can you come a little closer so we can really admire your your headpiece and everything that you're oh, wearing here? Yeah. here I, it's just incredible. There's cords yeah. everywhere. This is actually, this is a recording studio. So there's, there's cords everywhere. Oh, okay. Be careful. Um, hi. I'm sorry. I don't mean to erase you. Oh, you're good. Um, so yeah. And I would like to do it on a stage. 
<laughs> with a live audience. Uh, and, uh, I don't know. I think maybe. Um, I mean, I I love I love big rooms. I love intimate rooms. Um, I'll do it any. I'll do it wherever they have me. Maybe the Rockefeller Brothers Fund has a a theater that they like to use for <laughs> unusual queerdos like myself. Um, oh, and other people. Welcome. I'm willing to share the stage with non queerdos too. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. How did you make How did you make this? Do you want to talk about? Um, the, okay, so I cheated a little bit, and um, I will be honest with you, I, I do have my look designed, not made for treasure when I do formally present it in a more finished way, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I love secrets. This headpiece is actually made out of um, a, a rough, like a necklace, um, that was from Treasure, the show about my mother. And what I have here are artificial flower petals, lilies. And um, we have these acrylic uh, teeth, which are used for taxidermy. And then we have all of these very large Swarovski crystals, uh, like they're chomping down on them. And that's what I wanted to do was have like, you know, rhinestone glittery drool all over me, but I didn't get to that. But I thought that maybe some flowers and a little like little paint on my face would be enough for you today. Um, the reason I'm ruining my look with my glasses is because I had to read my lyrics when I have them. Oh, this, <laughs> I will have them memorized for the actual show so I don't have to read them and then you'll be able to see my eyes. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, that's amazing. Do you did you do you have like any professional singing background? Your voice is you have a beautiful voice. I don't have. Um, I never studied. Here's what's funny. Um, going to school and um, everything. I I never studied what I do today. I never studied fashion. I never studied theater. I never studied music. I never studied voice. I have a voice coach. Her name is Barbara Meyer Gustern. She, um, she coaches a lot of people, a lot of downtown people, a lot of names that you would know. Um, and so I've been going to her for a couple of years. Solid, I, I try to see her once a week and she's the best thing that to ever happen to my voice for sure. I remember after my first um, lesson with her, I wasn't able to sing how I did before. Like I, the voice is, I know where the voice comes from now. I didn't know where it came from. I was just trying, you know, even though I felt like I could always kind of carry a tune, um, I wasn't trained to uh, get, you know, have that tune come from a specific place. So now I have a weekly voice coach. Um, so yeah, and um, I write songs in my head. My, uh, I don't know how normally, I guess there is no right or wrong way to write music, but um, I don't play any instruments. So I rely on my process, you know, for the most part is this, like me and Viva get together and I sing my song out loud. I, I have the words usually, <laughs> and I have the melody and I have a general idea of how I want it to sound. And I, I just start singing, she finds the chords and then she shares the chords with other musicians. And then we like, we build the song. Gerard back here is fabulous. And he has all of this magic. I'm sorry, they can't see. Oh, there he is, his handsome <laughs> face. Um, and then it's like, like, like he was like really heavy on the bass tonight and all of this magical atmospheric sound. Like I came in with the opening song and I'm like, I want it watery. I want it to sound watery. And then he pulled out all of this magic. And, and so, that's how I do it. Um, I know how I want the song to sound. I have the melodies and the lyrics done, but I don't play any instruments. So mm -hmm. I, that's, that's how I do it. That sounds amazing. We have some questions from the audience. Um, someone wants to know why you chose pink rubber gloves and pink flower for your costume. They didn't hear my story. <laughs> Jeez, oh, okay, well, here's what happened. So we had a, so, so yesterday when I was deciding, like I was really making my look. Now I knew I was gonna, I wanted to be all white. Originally I was gonna be like all white. And I started making this thing from my head, which incorporated this really fun, very fine trim. And I started making it and I put it on my head 
And I'm like, oh no, I look like I'm from Cats the musical. And so I was like, no, no, I, so I scrapped that. And then I decided to make this into like a crown, a headpiece, this necklace ruff from um, my show Treasure. And so the only color so far was like this pink. Um, I mean, I know that the light is a bit obscure in here. You can't tell. I mean, you can see that it's pink. And so I called my friends over at Wing and Weft Gloves and I was like, do you have any like long white, like beyond opera length gloves? And they're like, no. And so I said, well, what do you have? And I said, we have like this bubblegum pink vinyl. And I was like, like I said, ew. I was like, ew. But then I was like, ew. So, so then I went in just today, I went to Wing and Weft Gloves and then I sat down and I, then I really saw what they had. And so they had these other ones, which I was wearing earlier, um, which is definitely a lot more subtle, more sophisticated. This, this is beautiful. Oh, that's, it's actually inside out right now. Hold on. That's, oh. So it's kind of like this gentle, like touch of rose kind of color. And so I started with these and then I'm like, well, I need some kind of a costume change. What well, I bought these anyway. These are the reason why I went in. I'm like, ooh, ooh, what the hell are these gloves? They're absolutely hideous and completely fabulous. Um, <laughs> if I had time, I'd put nails on them. That's why I'm wearing the gloves. Mm -hmm. They're gorgeous. I love them. All the better to drink your champagne with. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> wait, is there, are we someone, wa someone wants to know, will you work on any songs about other members of your family? Well, I've done my mother in the middle of doing my father. Um, it might happen. It might happen. Um, there are definitely songs about um, both of my brothers. Um, the thing is about songs, it's never really, it's, it's almost never about one thing. All of those songs are really layered. There's probably like 10 ideas in one song that layer together and it becomes poetry. Um, I, uh, there are definitely, there are specific songs, I think about my older brother. There are songs about my younger brother. I have a good relationship with my younger brother, Christopher. Um, and, you know, I kind of grew up oh, far away from like any other family in terms of like aunts and uncles and cousins and all that. Like we grew up in like Texas and then we were like went to Idaho and um, all of my like more immediate ish family is in Maine and I really don't know them very well. And um, I don't know them well enough to uh, write songs about them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I don't, I'm not gonna say that I have plans to do a whole show about um, either of my brothers. Um, I have, I think my next show might be um, my, an extended version of um, this show <laughs> because I have so many like political songs and um, uh, I can't relate them all to my father necessarily. And so I'll probably do that. And then of course, there's always the show about love and love gone wrong. And you know, that's probably about 10 shows right there. <laughs> um, so, you know, I have, and then there's, you know, and then there's just other songs. Um, I have- so What I have are you working on now? Is there something that you're, that we should be on the lookout for that's coming up next from you? What's on your horizon? Uh, well, I would like to get this done so that I can focus on something else. It's, um, I'm working on other things that aren't necessarily musical. Uh, I'm, I have a couple shows coming up with uh, Taylor Mack and um, I have a really fabulous puppet show called Beautiful Evil Lost. That is the brainchild of Viva DiCancini over here. Yeah. And we've been hard at, yes. And it's a spaghetti Western. Viva, you wanna say, I've been like doing, a, putting a lot of hours in on that, right? I wanna thank you, Machine. This, this is the greatest queen, but I just wanna tell everyone out there, he's. He's terrible, never hire him because I want him to work with me for the rest of my life. And I love making your music. And he's doing all the sets and all the puppets. Ugh. And we have Basil Trist come and do a special hand mm -hmm. thing, but it's a spaghetti Western operetta. It's all about I think food. I saw that on Instagram, right? Was there a, a clip of yeah. puppets making yeah. out and, and singing? And... Directing <laughs> Becca Blackwell, Emily Davis and T Thompson are acting in it. and. Uh, we're actively looking for television support. So if anyone knows out there, we're making it into, we're making the pilot. And I will say this, it's hilarious. And it's hilarious. You, and it's been really fun oh, to get oh. and just rock. Oh, but. I love you too. So I've been doing like, like the last like two months, I've been working pretty solid on um, uh, Viva's 
puppet show, Beautiful Evil Lost. So there's that. Um, gosh, I'm working on a public sculpture. Um, ah. I'm doing, I have another project that I started. Museum I, of Art and Design. Oh, I'm not allowed. That hasn't been officially, Ooh. hasn't been officially oh. announced. But I will announce that. We'll edit that out. <laughs> but I, I, let's just say I'm preparing for a show. Sorry. It's oh all good. God, too, never give her too much champagne. Right. You never know what's going to come sorry. out Nobody of that gorgeous mouth. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I, uh, I would like to just do more. I'd love to do more shows. Um, you know, I did Treasure at the Guggenheim, and I have to tell you that we, uh, you know, I left the show. Nobody commented about the visuals. Actually, no one commented about the fashion show, um, even though I loved doing it and it was fun and the models had a great time. Um, everyone loved the music. They loved the songs um, and the storytelling. And so I want to. I want to record that. I mean, that was September, 2019. Of course, this whole like last year has kind of like been erased, you know, um, but I want to, I want to record, first of all, I want to build treasure. Um, I presented it um, on stage um, at the Guggenheim as a works and process show. And um, I, but I haven't revisited it. That was my first time presenting it. That was the first time I ever did a show on stage at the Guggenheim, like, whoo, you know, um, so, I want to, um, you know, finish that because I only presented eight songs. I think I think it was only eight, maybe nine. Um, there should probably I I like the idea of twelve songs, um, or maybe ten. Um, so there it needs more songs, and I need to record it. I this you know, the painting needs more songs, and I want to record it. I want to make it available. Um, you know, I know that musicians don't really make money these days, but that's not what it's about. It's about sharing. Um, I hope to leave the world a better place, you know, by the time I'm gone. And if I can share, if someone can learn from my experiences, uh, that was, I think, the highest honor. I think um, that's called doing the work. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I want to do. And I want to continue to make music. A lot of people don't know this, but um, uh, it's only recently that I started making music and when it's been like a dream of mine forever and forever. Um, I want to keep making music. I really, really love it. I might even give up designing costumes if I could. No, do don't. <laughs> you can do both. You're, I can do both. You're a Renaissance There's, man. You can do everything. Room for both. <laughs> we um, have Patrick on the lights here. And how how beautiful was the light show? Every time I looked at the screen, when I didn't have to be looking at my lyrics, I'm like, oh, I look different. Oh, I look good. And then Patrick would change it and be like, oh, how dare you? But then I would look even better. So, you know, it all works out in the end. My sick pink gloves. Ew, <laughs> ew, they really are disgusting. It's so funny. I mean, she's- In the best way though. Of them, pink <laughs> vinyl. And I really, I was like, ew. I was like, ew, that means it's good. I mean, maybe if they were mustard or like Kelly Green, that rid of like really hideous, you know, that, I probably would have gotten those too. You would have seen more gloves. <laughs> I would have been forced to buy all of them. Um, but what I love about this color is like, oh, it sounds really Barbie. And like, <laughs> it's one thing, like I shoplifted, shoplifted my first Barbie in my life. I think it was like a drugstore and it was like Malibu Barbie. This is like back in the seventies, you know, and they were like kind of cheap anyway, but like my parents were really, they were ashamed of who I am and what I wanted. I wanted, I wanted to do dolls. I love dolls and I love, you know, I, I don't know. And Hmm. Now I play with dolls all the time. <laughs> so, well, we're, 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 <laughs> we, have to, uh, we have to wrap up in a minute, but I'd love a last question for all of you there is, um, can you talk about what's currently inspiring you? Are there any like performers, musicians, designers, artists, anything influencing your aesthetic, particularly these days? Um, Do any of you want to share? I, you know, I, uh, I'm inspired by the people around me. I'm really lucky to say that all of my favorite musicians and performers are people that I know personally. I don't have to go outside my circle to be inspired. Um, Viva inspires me, Gerard inspires me. Ooh, Jesus. They're like ritual. Yes, for sure. oh, thank you. And, but yeah. I, you know, I love, um, I have uh, amazing friends and performers. Like I love Justin Vivian Bond. I love Christine. I love my friend, my dear friend, Carol Lipnick. Her voice is just like, comes from this magic place. Um, um, oh God. You know, that, that's a really hard question because I gather my ideas, my inspiration as I go throughout my day. I open my eyes and the inspiration starts. Mm -hmm. I close my eyes and the inspiration continues. 
What can I tell you? Because I dream. You know, it I'm is constantly also, evolving. That's that's what I, helps inform what you're doing, which is yeah, wonderful. yeah. They say go to bed with a dream and wake up with a purpose, and it's like, well, shit. If the dreams would just stop happening, maybe, <laughs> no, go to bed with a purpose. No, yeah, no, go to bed with a dream, wake up with a purpose. But if it, if only the dreams would stop, so I could like get on to the purpose. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, this is purpose. Um, yeah, I hope that sounded somewhat intelligent. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, I think we're kind of going to have to wrap up now, but I want to um, thank you on behalf of everyone at the RBF, mm -hmm. extend a huge thank you to all of you for an incredible performance. We can't wait to hear more about the painting and the other projects you all have coming up. Mm -hmm. And thank you to everyone in our audience for coming. It's been great to have you all. Please visit our website at rbf.org slash events for information on our upcoming programs and to sign up for our mailing list. Thank you again to Machine and Viva and Gerard and Patrick and Erica, everyone over there. It's been amazing. Thank you so much. And we will see you soon. Thank you. Be well. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm gonna pose until my image disappears from the scene. Oh.